All right, welcome back to The Few Show, everybody. My name is Bud. I am an account executive here at Xfusion.io and co-host of The Few Show. I am excited to be joined today by my guest, Brian Barbo. Brian is a principal and founder of Your Digital Canvas. He has more than 20 years of experience in the management and entrepreneurship fields. As a consultant and entrepreneur, he has worked as a principal or partner in software development, hospitality, accounting, and finance, retail, e-commerce, consumer services, professional services, construction, and SaaS. Brian, it's awesome to have you on the show, buddy. Thanks for Thanks being for on. having me, bud. Yeah, it's a pleasure. All right, man. Well, uh, your list is long and distinguished, so we have Why, a lot to talk you. about. Thank excellent, you. Excellent Top Gun reference. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's not a lot of people that get that, well, because um, there's a lot of people that I interview that are younger. Yeah, but, well. uh, um. Let's go ahead and start with, uh, we, we can start with your digital canvas, and then we sure. can go ahead and break off into a, a bunch of this other stuff. But you you have been in the entrepreneurial field for a long time, I and, have. and we can talk about um, what got you there and, and why you started down that field. But let's go ahead and talk about your digital canvas uh, and why you started that and what it is, and then we'll break off into reviewed and um, uh, uh, crowd share crowd and share. that later. Yeah, sure. So um, that's a great question. It's one of my favorites. It always comes up in networking groups, obviously, or when you meet, you know, a new contact. Um, when I was, so I started my career professionally as a restaurant manager, and it was a ton of fun. It was the best way to make money in the world, second only maybe to bartending. Um, after my management career, I went into consulting, consulting hospitality, bars, nightclubs, restaurants. And, you know, just through the course of business, I had a lot of people come to me and saying, hey, we really need a website. We want to get a website built. And I had, you know, I saw opportunity. I smelled opportunity. Um, just as I was about to start Digital Canvas to build websites, we wound up getting a consulting client that was outside of the hospitality world that uh, worked exclusively with, bless you. They worked exclusively you. with, you know, he was a web company and very traditional, you know, large agency, bunch of guys sitting at desks, bunch of handsome people doing outside sales. And he brought us in to manage some revenue problems and fix some cost issues. Um, at the end of that contract, you know, we handed him a playbook and said, hey, here you go. You maybe have six months before you're out of business. If we don't make some quick changes, let me know what you want to do. Very long story short. Uh, he defaulted on his payment. He cursed me and my team and kicked us out of his office. And uh, in three months, he closed. And we talked, you know, my partners and I at the time and said, we really need to recoup that revenue. Let's go ahead and kick off our website company because now we have a playbook on how to do it. So we did. So we launched Your Digital Canvas, um, you know, called a bunch of my consulting contacts, just, you know, the friends and family, like most people start businesses. And, you know, we came up with this mission. We wanted to deliver more value to someone than they thought they would get dollar for dollar. You know, and we, we had bought in the past websites for clients we were consulting, we were doing marketing work for, and we couldn't believe how much money we were spending and how little we were getting, and especially on the support side. And so, you know, Digital Canvas from day one has been built for three things, and one is to make sure that the business owner is being treated right, whether they're a multinational, multi-million dollar organization, or they're a much smaller group, you know, a guy with a truck who's just trying to get his business going. We want both those people to feel the same here. And two is we want to deliver value that's insane. And we often hear that. We have clients tell us, are you sure that's what you do? Oh, yeah, that, the contract is correct. Everything that's in there is real. And then they go, for that price. And we go, yes, yes, for that price. That's absolutely right. And so really that's it. We want to level the playing field. And, and we've done that for over 15 years. We want to level the playing field between – you know, the hair salon that's right outside my office here or the massive manufacturer that's just down the road. We want to provide that same level of service to both of those people. Right on. So <clears throat> looking at your website here, um, like this is kind of the same thing for for everybody, kind of what we deal with as, as a customer service um, company compared to something that, you know, a, a SaaS provider deals with compared to, I mean, just about anybody that's in business deals with, right? Yeah. Like you, 
one of your examples here is, is you had eight different software services that you were using, um, but you weren't using the full gamut of all those right. software services, right? Right. You were using about 60% approximately of each service. Yes. Um, but you had eight different services because you needed bits and pieces of, of all those services. Yeah. Um, maddening, right? Absolutely. So, infuriating. Yeah. Right. So you're paying for all these different services using a little over half of all these services. And is that your, your aha moment? Like, okay, I'm paying two times what I need to be yeah. paying for using all this stuff. I can build this myself and I can help all these different companies Everybody do else. the same thing. Yeah. So we, it, it was, there were, there were probably two halves to that aha moment. And one was, you know, through the course of building websites. And again, you know, like every company, you're starting with just everyone you can get as a customer because you need the revenue. And we eventually, you know, we're getting bigger and larger companies here in North Texas. And eventually they'd come to us and say, Hey, we <laughs> want to build a tool that does X, Y, and Z. I'd go talk to my developers and be like, Hey, we can totally do that. And, and so we kind of had this stumbled into realization of we can build software and apps. We have the teams to do it. We've just never used them. Um, and while we were going through that process for a client with a particularly large and complicated piece of software, it was the second half of that aha where, where, and it was, I was sitting at my desk. I'll never forget this day, logging into four different platforms to manage and coordinate and move everything. And I had this, we build this stuff. Why, why am I using <laughs> all of this? Yeah. Uh, and so that's when we really, you know, made that a major vertical of the company and started really pushing in that direction. Nice. So you, you can build, you can build a software that these companies can log into and, and just log into one piece of software and do everything for this company. Yes, sir. Am, am I getting this correct? Yeah. I'll actually give you a Amazing. great example. Yeah, so we have, okay. um, and because of our NDI, I can't give you a, a name, but I can sure. fully flesh out the concept. So um, in the Northeast, there's a large healthcare company. They have something like 20 or 23 locations. They're managing multiple therapists, multiple physicians. I mean, it's a lot of uh, home health. They do have in-office visits. It's this crazy health ecosystem that focuses very strongly on early intervention, so three years old and younger. Um, you know, all the way from speech pathology to occupational therapy, I mean, an entire gamut of services. Um, they're spending um, around $80,000 a year for all of the softwares they use to run this practice. The, the software we're building for them, it's a single point login, and we are managing their billing, including submitting to the state for insurance, for Medicare, for Medicaid, reconciling those bills, whatever balances due is automatically sent to the responsible party, party for payment, pardon me, um, payments handled online or through, you know, your mobile device via text message or an email. We're handling scheduling, including the rooms, including the home health. Uh, through a native mobile app, the therapists are able to record their soap notes immediately after finishing therapy. The therapists see their schedules. They're able to schedule time off. Um, they're able to schedule appointments. We're handling patient intake, including HIPAA compliant uh, EMR systems so that the patients are able to sign up, fill out the paperwork. No more. You have a book of paperwork and you're, you're doing it all by hand and wondering why it's the same 18 forms over and over again uh, using digital signatures and some pretty cool technology there. Um, all the way through payroll reporting based on time clocks, including the in-office staff, not just the therapist and the service providers. So everything from electronic, you know, from, I'm sorry, medical billing and coding, reconciliation, payroll. I, I mean, everything that runs this organization is going to be done in one place. Um, and, and, you know, the amount they're paying, I won't, I won't say the price, but in about, anyone can do basic math, in about a year and a half, they're going to be at break even versus the 80 grand a year they're paying now for all the licenses that they're using. It's awesome. It is a cool system. Awesome. We really love the business. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So let's, let's talk about how you do pricing. Cause I, I love your, your pricing strategy. So sure. explain to everybody, um, how, how you, how you, how you figure that out and how you get 
get to that yeah, pricing yeah, point. Yeah, great question, bud. So we're, we are, uh, and I know every business is a beautiful and unique snowflake, and this is one way that we are a beautiful and unique snowflake. So we put a lot of focus in our planning. It doesn't matter if we're building, you know, a basic website for a, a chiropractor just getting started or a very complex software like the one I just mentioned, or we're mapping out an e-learning or instructional design course for onboarding employees. We do the exact same process. And that is we put a lot of time and a lot of effort into our planning stage. We do wireframes. We do exhaustive scopes of work. We make sure that we have all of our functionality and requirements up front because we don't want to surprise people. And in our industry, that's one of the worst things that happens. As you go, there's a company in Dallas that I'm very familiar with. If I went to them and said, hey, I have this software I want to build for this medical practice, they're going to say, great, we start at 150 grand and it's 125 an hour. And we go, okay. And they're just going to ping me hours. And the odds of me getting that software for 120000 really, really low. With Digital Canvas, the difference is because we do that planning up front, we come back to you and we say, okay. And because I'm horrible at math, I'm going to use really round numbers that makes it easy on me. We're going to say, <laughs> okay, your cost is $120,000. That's a firm fix. We're not going to blow that. As long as that scope of work and that functionality does not change. And even that, within reason, we can handle change requests. Because software is dynamic. When you're building it, things mm -hmm. are going to come up. But, but, you know, as long as we're not adding a completely new thing, we're not going to ever come back to you and ask you for money. Additionally, we're going to take that firm fixed price. We're going to divide it by 12, and our clients make 12 payments. That helps with cash flow. Very few companies are sitting on a war chest of $80,000 to build software. But you can handle monthly payments. And if our client needs it, we'll spread it out to 18, occasionally 24. Because, again, like I said at the beginning here, we're focused on the small business. We want to level that playing field so that the guy with three trucks doing pest control has the same tools at his disposal as Orkin does. And then, so most software takes five, six months to develop, depending on how complicated it is. Again, this medical one I just illustrated, that's probably, a, they have an 18-month term, and that's going to be probably 10 months worth of development, which is why we stretch their term out. It's a massive system. Um, what we do, once your software is developed, any remaining time on your term, my team is your team. So, and again, it doesn't matter if it's a website, e-learning software. Something goes wrong, you need to make a change, you need to make an edit, you need to make a revision. We're not going to ping you for hours. We're not going to bill you for the maintenance or the upkeep. And there is ongoing maintenance that's required on software after launch as you scale and a lot of technical stuff we won't get into. You submit a request to us within 48 hours. Most of those requests are solved. The ones that take a little bit longer, we make sure you have heads up within the first 12 hours that this may take three or four days to accommodate that change. And again, we're never going to charge for it as long as it's within that original understood scope of work and functionality. Nice. That's that's amazing. How, how big is your team in order to be able to make that work? So we have, on the development side alone, just on the programmer side, we're running 42 developers. Um, I have five wow. designers and artists, and I have uh, three project managers. Wow. So mid-size. Good for you. I yeah, don't know yeah. what that answer is. Yeah. No, I mean, that's it's a good team. You know, yeah. it is a good team. It is a good team. I, I joke that um, I have a small army. You do. You do have a small army. Are you all are you all pretty local or are you remote kind of throughout the U.S.? How did yeah, you build so your team there? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are we're now scattered. We did not used to be um, way back. I mean, 12 years ago, we started some really interesting, because of the consulting work, we brought some interesting initiatives into Digital Canvas. And one of those, for example, was we don't work on Mondays. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, we've scaled to the point where I can't accommodate that anymore. But, you know, we'd answer emails. We weren't just going dark. No one comes to the office. I'm never going to call you on a Monday. Have some quality of life. Now, you're going to work four right. 10 hour days. We're going to put in 40 hours. But every weekend's a three-day weekend, you know. But it was really funny. I would talk to my staff, and we'd be like, oh, my gosh, it was Memorial Day. And, you know, we were all confused because we're used to not working on Mondays. And we'd go to a movie and be like, why are there so many people here? It, oh, oh, because <laughs> the rest of the world gets this Monday off. Um, right. It was great. And we are, and I admit, we're trying to get back to that. We have a couple of large things to roll out, and we'll accommodate that. But that's neither here nor there. Um, and we, you know, for the environmental impact, and again, quality of life is very big for us, that work-life balance. We've always allowed our staff the opportunity to work from home. Uh, when COVID hit and we were all impacted by that, obviously, regardless of the industry you were in, we did a, you know what, you guys, 
we're not going to ever have you come into the office again. We have, I have space. If you want to come and sit and you need to get out of your house and do what you need to do, you're more than welcome. Um, we do have remote teams. That's awesome. which will, thank you. Uh, it allows yeah. us to offer 24 seven. So my teams work 24 hours a day. Um, it's one of the ways that we're able to accommodate our request in such a timely manner. I don't just have people working nine to five central. Um, and again, those aren't outsourced. These aren't, they are offshore, but they're my guys. They're under my NDA. Mm -hmm. They actually sign when we do development for software, they sign a direct NDA between them and the client and with me and the client. We are very big on protecting IP. I know these guys, I know where they live. If I need to, I can be in front of them within about 12 to 18 hours, regardless of where they are on the planet. I have one gentleman in Thailand that might take me a little bit longer, but that's, that's a thing. Um, yeah. It, you know, and, and our, you know, I, I do say this and I am very proud of this fact. My longest tenured developer right now is just crossed the four year anniversary with me, um, which is very rare for the not sitting in your office development because they usually get poached or they start freelancing. And, and he's been in my stable and been a very good, loyal worker for a long time. I, I actually am so grateful for the work he does. My shortest current tenure developer just passed his one year, two month anniversary. And he reminds me as every month takes by, Brian, it's one year and three months. I know that's coming up in about two more weeks. Um, <laughs> so we do have loyalty. We do know that team. We're not just hiring a one-off to get it done and we're saving money. I mean, these are our guys. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And that, that makes, that makes for a big deal. You know, when you, when you're talking to these potential clients yes. uh, as well, you know, yes. like it's, it's a big deal for you because you know, these guys. But it's also a big deal for when you're talking to your potential clients. You can you can vouch um, yes. for for your people. Yeah, and and if you're um, in that buying space and you're not worried about your intellectual property, you are you are already in danger. And so that's why we do put a lot of security and emphasis on protecting that IP around whatever you build. Um, you know, a lot of our clients intend to monetize their app or their software, and a lot of them do when they're done. They'll pull out some of their secret sauce or mission critical stuff that they don't want in the public domain and they'll turn around and start selling subscriptions. You know, again, this medical practice that I'm using as a reference point here, they fully intend to rebrand essentially white label what we build for them and sell it on the open market because they're, they're very smart people. And they realize for the investment they've put into us, they can sell subscriptions at half off what they were paying all those other softwares. And again, within about 12 months or, you know, I think their base was about, uh, I think it was two or 300 paid subscriptions. The software is now revenue positive as opposed to breaking even. See, now that's, uh, I was talking to somebody on, on one of my shows yesterday, right? And that's called aligned incentives, right? Now you have an aligned incentive with, with your clients, which yeah. also builds trust, Right. So you've done all this planning with them. You've built trust with them. You've done an amazing job for them. And now they can, can take what they've done that's saved them money. They can make money from that, yeah. which is, I mean, a, an amazing thing for you to give them and, and good on you and your company thanks, to, to allow them to do that. Like that's, that's an amazing thing, but that's, an aligned incentive, which I, I'm starting to tell people, you need to learn those two words. Yes. Uh, in this day and age, like those two words are huge. I right? agree. Um, and, and gives them the opportunity to build their business as well. Right. Now, what that does is, again, um, gives, gives trust to you, but also when they talk to somebody, they're going to be like, oh, Hey, go talk to Brian because we have this issue and he did this for us. And now we can make money off this. He can do the same thing for you. Yeah. Right. So instead of you losing money, like a lot of people think if, if I let them, if I let them sell my product, then I'm losing money. Well, no, what that does is, is actually brings in more revenue. So you're exactly right. Brilliant, it, man. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. It, it also, guarantees an ongoing revenue base for us because every software that mm -hmm. gets monetized and sold needs support. They're going to need that ongoing security. I mean, new threats, as you know better than I do, new threats arise daily. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to need some sort of help or ticket system when something goes wrong. 
we have the team in place and our clients, you know, our retention rate on clients is about 80%. And so in our world, that means when that initial term is up, they pay another 12 months. Some of them, I have one that just signed a three year ongoing retainer for us to provide support for their monetized system. Um, and so we, we have everything that you've just said is exactly right. And we're ensuring that we have that high retention rate for our clients. We have very low churn. My longest client right now has been a client for 12 years. Um, my awesome. shortest is just past the year and a half mark, not counting new projects that are in development. Sure. Um, so sure. yeah, so we, we do have a high retention rate and we love our clients. They become our friends and our family. Awesome. Awesome. No, I, I really like this model and, and what you're doing there. Um, but this isn't the only thing you have going on. Like you have right. some really exciting new things that are happening. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you, you want to talk about with, with my digital uh, or your digital canvas? I, I said, my, well, digital technically canvas. it is yours. Um, I mean, it, it is, is my yours. digital yeah. canvas. Yeah. Um, but is there anything you want to talk about more with this before we, we jump off uh, onto a couple of your pivots here? Yeah, for um, sure. Uh, there, so yeah, very briefly, you know, I would hit on again, we're, we're rolling. In fact, we just rolled out last week, this initiative, we call it the deal. You can't refuse seriously. Uh, because my kids love the Incredibles. And so we call it the Dickers. And if anyone gets that reference power to you, and I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and that, that is everything we just talked about the planning, the ongoing support, the difference there, the term is six months, but bud, the cost for that website is $800. And nice. in our world, that's insane. No one can do that. Mm -hmm. But again, I have this massive army of guys. Let's put them to work. Um, and the quality is the big question. That's not a WordPress template. It's not a Wix, a Squarespace. If you go to the Digital Canvas website, the quality you see there, the design, the programming, the layout, is exactly what we're delivering for under $800. Takes about two months to turn that out. For four months, my team is your team. And we're going to take care of whatever you need. It's a, an insane promo. Uh, it's a, definitely a loss leader. My finance guy was foaming at the mouth as I was kind of going, no, we're going to do this. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it'll work. And, and then the other thing, the one that really, you know, beyond the other two pivot points that really excites me right now, we're just now launching the vertical for, and I've mentioned it earlier, uh, e-learning instructional design. And whether that's we're bringing the same method, the same system, it's $8,000 per learning hour, which is about 20% below market. Right now the market's about, 8,500 to 13,000 per learning hour. And that's, are you onboarding staff? Are you an insurance agent and you need to educate your people to get their certs, their new people to get certified? Are you a restaurant and you need to do food handlers or your policy and procedure? The, the same thing that we've done for websites and software where we're bringing them to those small businesses, we intend to do with e-learning. There's so much application there. It's not just in school, it's not just for large, Coyot no, large Coyotas, as well, large corporations like Toyota, <laughs> who are trying to teach you how to sell a Corolla, there's so much opportunity and so much automation of that onboarding process or that training process that could be done in a gamified way where you're sitting down, you're playing a game and you're learning and retaining information. We have an IO psychologist on staff who structures those courses, who creates metrics and statistics where we can show you know, your team, your cohort went through this training and this is their retention rate and mastery of the topic. It's a very powerful tool when it's used correctly. So I am super excited about those. No, oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, check it out your digital canvas and, and we'll put, <clears throat> we'll put all these, uh, on the landing page for sure as well. Um, cool. but check it out. It's, it's a, a very handsome website as well and and it lays lays everything out for you nicely um but let's let's go ahead and and talk about a couple of exciting little pivots you have going on here yeah. as well um so let's let's go with crowd share first yeah um, that one's exciting i think i think so uh and, and this is this will be kind of a i would say a, a a B to kind of a B to C um, crowd share opportunity uh, yeah. for people. Um, so lay this out for for our viewers here. 
on on what exactly CrowdShare is. When I first saw this, I'm like, oh, this is another just another you know crowd sharing app, but it's really not. So yeah, lay this yeah. out and, and explain what exactly CrowdShare is because it's it's a little more exciting than that. Sure, great great question, bud. So CrowdShare is. You know, internally, we call it the HubSpot disruptor. We are not only developing it, I am the interim CTO there and, you know, probably going to be the long-term CTO because I like the company. I like the founders. The team is fantastic. Um, and the vision's amazing. You know, and so the nutshell, the elevator version of CrowdShare is, you know, and for our user role, we call them a channel owner. So let's say, you know, you're, you're Johnny's pest control. You know, you're running maybe three or four <laughs> trucks. You're doing your own social media marketing. Um, what you do is you go in very similar to HubSpot. You schedule your posts. You schedule them across platforms, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we've all done that. That's not exciting. You know, every one of us has used Hootsuite, for example. We know exactly how that works, especially if you're in the marketing and agency space. You live and die by Hootsuite. The difference is, and we do have a patent on this, when your scheduled post goes out, when it's published, you have what are called advocates, and an advocate could be, again, so, you know, let's use the, the gentleman with a very small business. His advocates are going to be his wife, his kids, his friends, the people at church. They sign up through the app. It's very simple. They put in a one-time code. They're connected to that channel. When that post is published, they receive a notification. They tap the notification on their phone. It opens up the app. They select what platforms they want to share that original post to, and it is published. And as anyone who works in this space knows, that organic reach, that organic share on social media blows you up through the algorithm. Um, we're not, it's not a bot. We can't automate sharing. There's a lot of reasons behind that, one of which is just unethical and horrible. Um, but we can encourage people to advocate for your business. And so, you know, CrowdShare is an amazing tool. And that's, you know, that's this version rolling out. If I, and I'm not at liberty to, but if I could tell you the other features that are coming as we get past this initial stage, I mean, it is going to change change the game as far as that kind of marketing goes. So that's, that's part of why this is exciting. Um, the other part is, to me, is, is the security part, right? Like, yeah. So why, why is that? part exciting to you because that i like i like the security part of, of this one as well because it's it's very secure from what i can i can see yes yeah it is so you know we've all seen heard or anecdotally come across those my facebook was hacked i lost my page someone got in in fact i just had a client uh call me who's not using crowdshare which makes me sad um, a very disgruntled and angry employee on their way out the door uh, got into their Hootsuite, scheduled a bunch of stupendously nasty posts, removed all the users except for them. They were an admin, so they had the ability to do that and change their password and basically just walked away. Uh, my client today, this morning, it's actually the call I walked into at 730 this morning uh, in a panic. Hey, who's publishing this? I don't know, man. We don't handle that for you. Did some research, reached out, and that's what's going on. With Crowdshare, we don't have that problem. The channel owner is always the channel owner. There's no shared admin. We do have – you can you can uh, delegate some of that scheduling and publishing to someone, but that person who initially signs up, Brian, when I sign up your digital canvas to use Crowdshare, I have ultimate control over my users. I'm never going to come into that situation where that happens. Our data is secured. We're not selling data. We're not Facebook. You know, we're not, and, and we could if we wanted to. If we were not the ethical company that we are, and it's we're very straightforward about this, you know, we're pulling a lot of analytics. We provide a lot of analysis and analytical data to our users. We could absolutely make our product all about that data, not the service we're providing. And we very clearly and distinctly are not going that route. Right. I love that. And it also gives the the people the option to to opt in or opt out. Like yes. they they can share it or they don't have to. So, I mean it's it's ethical, it's it's not pushy and and it's organic. Um I I really like that. Thank I you. am not big on social media. Um I have my LinkedIn because I have to. 
<laughs> uh, my wife and my children, on the other hand, are all over social media. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I was when I first saw this, I'm like, oh, but then looking into it, I'm like, no, I, I really like the way this is set up. I appreciate um, No, no, you're welcome. I am. Yeah, I I think it's great. Um, and, and I like the way, you know, I, I like how it's, I, I just like the, the organicness of it. So, um, it, it could be huge for a business owner. And I, I was also thinking, you know, like it, it's just going to be another thing for tweens to get on and, and be like, Oh, here, let me post something. And but it's it's not it's it's for companies to right. to get their their message out. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't need my kids to be on another yet, yet another platform. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, one of the things yes. when I met with the uh, the founder and CEO of CrowdShare initially, and it's very rare that this happens. And again, Bud, you probably know this better than I do. Where your values align so closely with the person you're talking to. You know, and it wasn't just, you know, faith or the way that we look at the world or the way that we want to make an Im a positive impact in the world. Um, but, you know, but even down to the CrowdShare provides a really powerful tool to the small business, to the smaller business, or even to, you know, a scaling marketing agency that normally you're paying way more money for. You know, you're turning your network, your friends and family into essentially what a paid influencer is, Right. Mm -hmm. without having to do the pay, without having to spend the $5,000 per tweet that they send out just so you're getting reach. Again, like you said, we're getting that reach organically. And and when that came out of his mouth, I actually hit, we were having lunch, and I smacked the table, and I go, shut up. That's what we do at Digital <laughs> Canvas. We have this exact same goal. We have to work together. He goes, I know. And, you know, fast forward now almost a year later, and uh, and here we are. So, yeah. I hope you bought him lunch after you told him to shut up. No, no, sir. He bought my lunch. He was so, trying to woo me, oh. and it worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> right on. Right on. Um, so that's that's one of your pivots, yeah. um, which I really like. Uh, let, let's go to your other one. Let's go to review. Yeah. Uh, or reviewed. Yeah. And, and let's talk about that. Um, this is another one. I, I spent some time looking at a bunch of these reviews today. And uh, I think this is kind of a cool little thing as well. So let's talk about reviewed and, and what you're doing there. Yeah, and, sure. And how that works and, and how both of these came to be. Yeah. So reviewed, we're, we're actually in the middle of a massive overhaul with reviewed. And part of that is, so reviewed relies heavily on Facebook and Google's APIs for what it does and how it functions. Both of those entities have dramatically changed the way their APIs work. So reviewed is being, I mean, upgraded literally as we speak uh, to bring us back into the good graces of our large digital overlords. Um, so reviewed is really cool. So I'll hit a little bit on the product, a little bit on where we're headed with the product. And then, you know, again, I can okay. address how we kind of got into those. So reviewed is the, the first and only of its kind review aggregator with a bonus of it does have the world's first live video. I'm sorry, not live, not real time, uh, but video <laughs> reviews. And so mm -hmm. what happens, it's really cool. So we pull reviews from Facebook, Google, and Yelp. Um, in this overall, we'll be adding a couple other platforms. Um, there's a, a widget that goes on your website, and it can be either an inline where you just, you know, put it in line with your content. It can be a pop-up. We all know what a pop-up is, what a pop-up widget is these days. One differentiator there between us and everybody else is that pop-up is entirely customizable. The colors match. You know, if you go and look at some of the sample sites that are on the reviewed website, the color scheme isn't set. You don't get, you know, you don't pick from three color themes. You literally pick each element and using a system color picker, decide how you want it to appear. Um, changing the position and sizing of buttons. It's, a, it's an incredibly powerful tool that we built for our customers, for our clients. Um, in addition, once we, once we overcome this obstacle I just discussed, when we get republished on the app stores, you download the reviewed app and let's say again, let's say that I'm doing pest control. I've got three trucks. And I'm going to tell my guys, you're going to have the reviewed app when you're done. Ask our customers for a video review, video testimonial. It's very brief. It's a 60 second clip. They hit it on their phone. They search the business. They tap John's pest control. 
create a review. Lucy, tell me about your experience with John's pest control. John was great. The staff is great. My technician did a great job. I haven't had bugs in 18 years. I love John to death. He's going to save that. That publishes to the site. Review displays above the fold. The most important thing and how we all grow our businesses early on is word of mouth. Reviewed is the next mm -hmm. best thing to word of mouth, right? So when I go, if I'm looking for a business, and most people are like this, one of two things happens. I Google them, and I go to their website. Sometimes I'm going to click on an ad. I'm going to go to their website, but all websites are the same, and let's be honest, but they're all the same. If you look at any chiropractor's website, you know what every chiropractor's website says. They all care about you. They all are worried about your health. They all want to give you a, a more healthy lifestyle with vibrant, you know, energetic years. That's not denigrating chiropractors, but there's only so much you can communicate on a website through text, through the written word. Mm -hmm. But when you go to a chiropractor <laughs> and his page is nothing but, or I shouldn't say nothing but, but one of the first things you see are written reviews from Google, Facebook, Yelp in their native format. You know it's from Facebook, from Google. There are other softwares that do very similar thing by aggregating reviews, but they're formatted according to the way the software wants them to be. We're formatted the way Google wants them to be. Um, but then you're seeing videos. You're seeing living, breathing people saying, this is one of the best places I've ever been. You should go there too. You have that word of mouth. You have that social proof. The other path that a lot of buyers take is they find your business. Maybe it's a business card. They've heard about you. They go to your website. The minute they see you, what do they do? They go look at your reviews. And when they go find your reviews online, they see the reviews for all your competitors. With Reviewed, you're capturing them. They're staying on your site. And you're giving them the information they need to make a buying decision. Yeah. So when I, when I see all those reviews, I'll be honest. Like I'm like, how many of these are real? Yeah, you know, like I, I don't know how many of them are real. When I when I go onto Am Amazon, I'm like yeah. how many of these are real? I think I think they're all real, but I don't know. Yeah, you know, I don't know how many of them are real. It could be the company going on there with a bunch of different names and and saying, yeah, I bought this and it's a really great product. Um, but with this reviewed, you know, I I, I think that's that's got to be cut down to less. Yeah, like they have to be real. <laughs> If yeah. it's a real person, they're talking. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And like you said, it's right there on the site. You don't have to jump off to check reviews. Right. So, yeah. you're not going hunting. It is reviewed powerful. is a very powerful tool. Yeah. The the conversion, the effect it has on conversion rates, especially for paid search. If someone's doing a paid search campaign and they have reviewed, their conversion rate goes through the roof. It absolutely makes a difference. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So how, how did you pivot into these two, uh, crowd share and reviewed and, and, and was that, was that kind of part of your digital, um, your digital canvas or, or did that, did they kind of grow from there? Yeah. You know, I mean, how, how did you get into those? Sure. Great question. Um, so there's, cause you know, and there, maybe that's an answer with two parts. Let me see if I can do this succinctly, uh, in the interest of everybody's time and attention spans. Um, reviewed was a really fun, it's one of my favorite stories. And I absolutely, the, the founder over there, a gentleman named Tyler Thomas, he's a personal injury attorney by day and a tech entrepreneur by night. Um, and he's just a great guy. It's very rare. I never thought in my life, and I mean this very sincerely, as sincere as an Italian can be, I never in my life thought that I would say a personal injury attorney is a good guy. Um, but he, you know, he is. He doesn't do any of the cheesy ads. He's not, you know, I don't even want to go down that road. But he reached out to me. There was, you know, life is not always good. Business is not always great. We were having a really tough mm -hmm. time. And he heard about it, you know, kind of through the grapevine, he reached out and he said, Hey, I have this company, maybe I can help you. Now, now his initial approach was, I want you to resell this for me and we'll cut you in on a hefty chunk of revenue. And as we were talking, I said, I'm, you know, initially it was a WordPress only plugin. And I said, I'm sorry, we don't develop in WordPress. Like I, I admit I'm a little, I'm a little Italian. And I said, we're, we're professionals, mm -hmm. so we don't use WordPress. And he goes, well, my developer said, we can only build this in WordPress. I said, I'll tell you what, man, if you give me 24 hours, I bet you one of my developers can get you working on a non-WordPress site. And he goes, in 24 hours? I said, absolutely. 
do we have a deal? I said, if, if it works, you pay him for the work. And he goes, yeah, we have a deal. There's no way you're going to do this. So I get in my car, I call my developer. I go, Hey man, <laughs> I have a unique <laughs> challenge for you. Uh, the next day I walk back into Tyler's office. I open up, uh, my laptop and there's the reviewed plugin on a non WordPress site on a custom PHP page. Um, so he goes, okay, let's forget that first conversation. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. Can you guys fix it? Absolutely. So it started through development. And as that development piece went on, you know, he brought me in as a, uh, initially as his CTO and then eventually COO. And so I'm managing both tech and operations there. I'm looking to divorce myself, uh, from that cause it's just way too many hats. Um, but, you know, and again, as, and as I said before, I become friends. Our clients become family. You know, Tyler's probably one of my best friends now. We talk all the time, regardless of what's going on in our workspace. Um, sure. You know, he'll come over to my office. We just sit and have coffee. Um, and so that grew that very that grew very organically out of the digital canvas ecosystem. It was not a direct offshoot, but directly related to that. Um, you know, CrowdShare, very similar. Um, the founder there, Lane Gregory, great. Great guy. Excellent pit master, by the way. But if you're ever down here, we'll go hang out with Lane and you'll have some amazing Texas barbecue. Um, Dude, I love meat. There yeah. you go, buddy. Yeah, come on down. Yeah. There were some pork chops and Brussels sprouts yesterday that were amazing. Um, Dude, I love Brussels sprouts, too. Hey, there I'm you down. go. Yeah, I'll see you next yes. week. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, Lane and I got connected and it was this, I have this thing and it's not, it wasn't put together very well what do we do? And I said, well, you know, we fix it. What do we need to do? Um, and, you know, over the course of developing trust and kind of working on that again, you know, here's an equity deal. Let's have you act as CTO because no one in leadership has that ability. And I do. And this is not a humble brag. It's a statement of fact. Because of my entrepreneurial experience, I, I have the tech background. I know it. And I tell people I'm kind of an idiot and I couldn't program my way out of a paper sack. I'm not a programmer. Uh, but I can manage and I can lead and I can spot talent and I can train. And I have, you know, I've been in and out of, I think I'm well over 20 companies now, over 25 years of doing this work. Um, I am uniquely equipped to address challenges that come up because I'm not just a tech guy. I don't look at everything as a programming challenge or a design challenge. It's very often an operational challenge. And, and so once that value gets recognized by my clients, I, I get recruited probably more more than people would think. Um, I turn down probably four or five recruiting offers for every one that I accept. Maybe that's yeah. a better way to say that. Yeah. Well, and that's that's okay. Like that's a good problem to have, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you you don't. Again, I'll go back to my shows yesterday, right? Like you don't have to be the smartest person to to run the business. Right. You yep. just have to know how to surround yourself with the smartest people. You're absolutely right. Um, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of dumb people that are running really great businesses <laughs> because they know how to manage people and they know how to surround themselves with the smarter people. You're right? absolutely right. Um, and, and it's just I mean, that's just the way the way it is. They, they're hard workers and they know how to surround themselves. So I'm not yeah. saying that you're dumb. Don't take oh, yeah. that the wrong way. <laughs> no, totally am. Yeah. It, it, um, yeah. And I, I wear it with pride in my consulting practice. I tell my consulting or coaching clients, look, if you're the smartest person in the room it, and not, you know, you can be the smartest person on, on a subject. You can be a subject matter expert all day long. That's fine. But if you're the smartest person in every room you're in, you have failed miserably as whatever mm -hmm. you are, whether that's a parent, a business owner, a leader, a manager, you've done really poorly because you've hired very poorly. You should be finding talent that far exceeds your own abilities. And that's how you grow and succeed in business. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really good, uh, really good advice. But uh, don't don't give me other really good advice because you're going to answer one of my later questions if you Okay, I'll, doing I'll be quiet now, but. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm abashed and ashamed. <laughs> Well, well, don't be, don't be. Um, so you, you know, you said, you said something in that, in that response that, that I kind of want to go over. You, you have lots of years of experience in entrepreneurship, over 20 years of experience, starting several different companies, running several different companies, being a partner and a principal. Why, 
like there's a lot of people that don't want don't want that right entrepreneurs are a different breed Amen. um not everybody's cut out for it w- why what makes you tick why do you want to do that what was it in your background or growing up that made you want to to go down that path there's a big old truck that just passed by. Yes, sir. The, the one downside <laughs> to being on the third floor on the frontage road to the freeway. <laughs> I think it was rolling coal out there. Uh, Probably. Yeah. It's Texas, baby. <laughs> the stereotypes are there for a reason, sir. Uh, yeah. I am wearing boots and jeans. I admit that. So, yeah, you got me. Right on. Um, so, yeah, the great, great and interesting question. In fact, that's one of my favorites when I talk to other entrepreneurs or, or the people I coach and consult. So there are, as with most things in my existence, there are two parts to that answer. And the first one was, you know, as a child, I was never happy with my allowance. I appreciated it. It was great. Um, But, you know, I always wanted things that I was never going to get making a dollar or two dollars a week for mowing the lawn and picking weeds. Um, So I saved up, you know, I started my first business when I was about nine years old. I saved up $35. I bought a used lawnmower uh, out of the newspaper back when those things existed. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I pushed it around my neighborhood mowing lawns and got to the point where I was walking about a mile and a half to my furthest customer to mow lawns. Very nice old lady. Always gave me a ham sandwich and a glass of lemonade. Um, You know, so the summer I was 12, I made about $500 mowing lawns. And I was the wealthiest 12 year old you've ever seen in Albuquerque, New Mexico was an amazing experience. And I kind of went, this is the secret, right? I like doing my own thing. I like being my own boss. Um, The other half of that answer is when I got out of the the restaurant world as a manager, again, I loved that work. It was a ton of fun, but I miss and craved the challenge of being, and I, I do tell people this, and again, it's not a humble brag. It's a statement of fact. And I believe that part of my mission in life is to teach and guide and show other people how to do this as well. I am a warrior king, right? And you think of those those mm-hmm. early small tribes where I don't want to rule the world. I don't want to rule the nation, but I do want to have my own little fiefdom. And, you know, my guys are fierce and I am fierce. And, and I want to go to battle, whether it's on behalf of my client, you know, and that that is the cool thing about business today. The other guy doesn't have to lose, right? And part of why we we create our companies the way we do is every I do believe everybody can win. There is such a thing in this environment as a win-win situation. My clients get more value than right. they expect. They grow their business. We're making money. I'm teaching people how to be better people. I have this principle when I bring on a new staff member and I tell all of them in their orientation, I want you to leave here better than you showed up here. That's it. That's my main goal. I want you to do the work and produce well for me. But if you're here for three months or three years or 30 years, when you're done, I want you to look back and go, I learned so much and I grew so much as a person. I love that job. You know, and so that's what we're going for. And the, 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 the yet other of that second part of the answer, if that makes any sense, is, uh, you know, <laughs> yes. I do, I, I thrive on the struggle, right? I, I believe that For me, and like you said, it's very unique. It's not for everybody. Um, I love living on the edge. I'll give you a great example. A couple weeks ago, I was in Austin for business, and it was supposed to be a couple nights at an Airbnb, and it was just me. You know, the family was here because of school. It was a during week trip. And and I thought, man, it's going to be nice to kind of relax. I've got some big projects we're about to finish up. I'll get a couple days of rest and relaxing. I'll come back and hit it hard. The exact opposite, as is true for entrepreneurs, and every entrepreneur knows this, The exact opposite happened. I wound up, so I slept four hours Monday night. I left Tuesday. I did not sleep Tuesday night. I did not sleep Wednesday night. Um, I ate maybe a total of 400 calories across those days. And it is because the world caught on fire and every client who could have a crisis had a crisis, right? And, you know, there was one point, and I laugh about it now. It was kind of misery back then. There was one point where I'm on a call with a client and a project manager I have two clients sending me text messages with these massive prices that are blowing up around them. I have developers direct messaging me because we're at a blockage point on a major project. Everything is on fire and burning down, but we, I get out of that, that crisis moment, which lasted about 10 minutes, but again, no sleep because the world is just on fire for this particular 48 hour stretch. And there's this point, it's three in the morning and I'm pacing and thank goodness I was at an Airbnb. If I was in a hotel, I probably would have gone insane. Um, I'm pacing the floor. I'm thinking through, I'm strategizing how we're going to solve some issues. 
And I have this moment where I go, I have not felt this alive in so long, right? And it was that. <laughs> it's that going to battle, that challenge, that solving those strategic problems. I mean, I love that. And that's what drove me into entrepreneurship is that's what you do, right? When you're an entrepreneur and there's that big distinct difference. I'm not self-employed. I haven't created a job for myself. Um, and I think that bears note. You know, I do talk to a lot of people who say I'm an entrepreneur. Okay, great. What are you involved in? Well, you know, I have a lawn care business. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm out mowing lawns all day, listening to music. It's great. You are self-employed, and that's not a takeaway. Being self-employed is really hard. That takes a lot of work. Um, you know, but again, in that entrepreneurial level, you're changing your mindset, and you're looking more at the strategic as opposed to the tactics of how you execute it. And you're looking at this is where we're going to go, and this is how we're going to get there. And these are all the ways that we're going to benefit the people who go with us. And and so I just love that. You know, I love seeing people accomplish things they don't think they can accomplish. You're seeing that client who monetizes their system. And, you know, I, I love these calls. Hey, we made 10000 in revenue this month from subscriptions. Congratulations. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. so that's the heart. It really, like, the root of the why is I love the fight. I love fighting on behalf of other people. And I love when they succeed, right? And when they succeed, mm -hmm. I'm successful. It's not about how much money I'm going to put in my pocket. It's can I get you from your point A to your point Z? Can I get you to the place you really want to be where life is beautiful? So long long answer to a short question, bud. Aren't you glad you asked? No, that's all right. I am glad I asked. Because <laughs> right. there's, there, there's lots of different answers to that question, and none of them are wrong, you know? like It's true. I have a valid point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that answer. Um, so you have so many coals in the fire all, all the time. Um, and that was apparent with that, that last answer, right? Sure. Like you, you went down there, you were excited to kind of relax a little bit. You never did get to relax. <laughs> um, no. by I the way, to do that. when you were doing that, I was down in San Antonio with my wife. My wife was at a a little pastor's conference. I went down with her and we were, we were at the Alamo, um, you know, kind of chilling and relaxing while you were, you know, kind of going through hell. So I'm envious, um, but congratulations. I was, yeah. I was Alamo chilling. Was cool. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. It is I really have no cool. idea. It was in the middle of city square. And, <laughs> it is now, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, it wasn't then, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. um, but it is now and it was awesome and it was fun. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, it was. Did I'm you, sure it did was you going find somewhere. Alamo was kind of creepy. Did you did you get a little bit of like? Because I know I did. I've been there three or four times, and there's this very like creepy is the wrong word. But when you know the story and you understand what actually took place there, and it is very odd because you walk out and you're like, "Well, there's the rest of San Antonio, and I'm going to go to McDonald's and get a hamburger." Uh, right. But man, you know, if if I could have stayed and done what I like to do in places like that, which is really read and take in yeah. the whole essence of what it is probably. Right. Um, but we went there with a group of people and we didn't have a lot of time. So we, we went in to the little church part and walked around, went into the gift shop, um, just caught a little bit of the history. But I, if, if I had my druthers, I would have spent probably about, three or four hours there yeah. reading all the plaques really taking in what it was all about. Yeah, um, it's an but experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably would have caught the heaviness of, of everything. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I had a good idea of what the Alamo was. My wife had <laughs> zero idea. Right. She, I mean, she, she knew that people died, um, but that's really all she knew. She had no idea that there was a battle between Texas and Mexico. Like, that was all new to her. Um, so, you know, kudos to the American school system. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, what I had no idea was the long barracks. There is the oldest building in Texas that I didn't know. I didn't know that was the first building built. Um, but yeah, I, I would have, I would have actually captured the heaviness of, of everything if I would have been able to do well, what hey, I like next, to do. Next time you're out, like hit me up. I'll take you out for some barbecue. We'll go hang out at the Alamo. I'm the exact same way. I'm kind of a history nerd and just I love soaking it in. I did that at Alcatraz, you know, spent a lot of time and just kind of, you know, realizing the, and, and to be fair, in Alcatraz deserved human misery. Uh, 
that right. went on there. But you know, just getting yourself in that headspace of the of the men and women who lived in that system, man, I I love it. That that viewpoint of history is so important to me. So anywho, I didn't mean to to divert, uh, but I I just no. had to ask that question. Yeah. No, it's it's fine, and and I think um, where I was going with that was while we were having fun, you know, my, my point was going to be is what do you do for fun? Cause you, sure. you are in the middle of, of a bunch of different stuff all the time. What do you get to do to kind of bring yourself out and, and have fun? Yeah. Yeah. What, great question. So I have a, and you know, occasionally, probably deservedly so, my wife will make fun of me um, because I have this management consultant coaching mentality and I bring it to everything, right? I I have this principle or this belief system that when you have a capital T truth or a capital P principle, it applies at work, it applies at home, it applies as a parent, it applies at a, as a husband. Um, you know, one very quick and easy example, I won't go down this rabbit hole is, uh, one of the principles I teach my people is I'm responsible all the time, whether I'm there or not, right? Because mm -hmm. whether that's as a parent or as the guy running the company, if something goes wrong in my business, goes wrong between a project manager and a client, whose fault is that? It's mine. It's my responsibility to make that right. You know, and I teach my kids that you're responsible for what you do. So, um, so I have these very short term, this is fun. I have these very midterm, this is fun. And I have very long term fun. I'm going to answer all three and give you specific examples. So short term, at Thanks. least three times a week, I work out. I put on my headphones. I, uh, I have equipment at the house. I dim the lights because I don't need to look at myself in the mirror. I know how I look. Um, and I just release the tension and the frustration of the day. You know, and depending on how my wife will tease me and say, I know how hard work is based on how jacked you look throughout the week. You know, because during a hard time, I'm working out five, six, seven times a week just trying to get that stress and frustration out. Um, and I, I mean, I love it. It's a great release. It's a great way to get out all of that in a very safe and contained way, as opposed to, and I'm not knocking this, but before I developed that as a habit or release, you know, I'd stay at work a little bit late, have a couple drinks, then go home and think that everything was good because suddenly I'm in a good mood. Well, as soon as the alcohol wears off, I'm in a bad mood. Uh, mm -hmm. and all the stress is still there, but there's something about that physical release of exercise that just gets it out. Um, every night, minimum of six nights a week, you know, that seventh is, is Sunday, which occasionally is just, I need to rest and recuperate. I go out and I walk my neighborhood for an hour and I just have that peace and that quiet, you know, I get away. There's examples, uh, of, of very wise, much wiser than me in the past men who would step away from the noise of life and spend time in quiet contemplation. It's very hard for us to do in this day and age because we always have a computer in our hands. We always have screens and noise and when you're a husband and a father or a wife and a mother you're always going to have people demanding your attention and so physically removing myself from the house and just walking around dark streets at night occasionally i'll take the dog uh if he's being very well behaved that day but again just giving me that kind of peace right and that ability to process my thoughts without running it by or dealing with other people and then in the midterm, you know, I take, we used to call them in the old days uh, with my company, we call them out weeks. An out week is where you just can't work out of the office. You still work. It's very similar to the we don't work on Mondays piece. Um, you know, and so the last one I, I posted up at three different Paneras through the week. And it was great. You change your viewpoint. You change the way you see things. Um, Panera is one of my favorites, not because I eat any of the food, but you order me a Diet Coke and a cup of coffee and I can sit there and drink it all day long and the internet works and I get to people watch. I come up with some of my most interesting ideas just watching people interact at Panera. Um, and then in the long term, which again, Austin was supposed to be, but fell apart, about once a quarter, sometimes once every, you know, seven, eight weeks, I go out of town for a one or a two night stay. And it's not, I'm not trying to get away from my family. I love my family. In fact, I always feel bad when I'm leaving them. But that concentrated downtime where I'm able to really dive into things. And again, I'm not leaving my job. I'm still executing. I'm still doing the things that I need for my company to run. Um, but I do, you know, I tell my clients, I tell my guys, I tell my managers, I'm going to be stepping out for a little bit. If the world is on fire, get a hold of me. We've seen that happen. 
But if, <laughs> if things aren't burning down and no one's bleeding, just leave me alone and give me some space. And that's where I get to brainstorm. I get to think through, you know, and there's this principle. You can think and you can do. You can't do both at the same time. And so I have to very carefully and very purposefully give myself room to think, room to process what's happening. And I know none of that sounds fun, but it always turns into fun, right? So we take the family vacations. Um, I do enjoy walking the dog. Working out is very fun for me. I love taking my wife out every two weeks. Religiously, we have a date night. I'm a firm believer in you need to constantly date your spouse. And it's not just take her out to dinner in a movie. It's, you know, and, and, you know, but you know what this was like. Remember when you were first dating and how you would text her all the time? You know, you look so cute. I can't wait to see you. Or you're on the phone. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Um, you know, we still do that. Or she used to show up and surprise me at work when I was in the restaurant business. She literally right before this uh, showed up at work and surprised me. And we sat and ate lunch and she gave me hugs and kisses and, you know, sat on the couch and then, you know, she left. And, and so we, we've kept that dating energy going and, and that's a ton of fun, right? Or uh, mm -hmm. setting aside dates with my kids. I take my eight-year-old daughter on dates pretty consistently. I want her to see what that's supposed to be like. My, my son, he's four. He says we go on dates. His version of a date is sitting in the back of my pickup truck because it is Texas. And again, the stereotypes right. exist for a reason. Uh, but we'll right. sit in the back of the pickup truck and, and he, you know, drinks some water and I drink some water and we listen to music and we just, wherever we're parked, we just watch the world go by and he loves that quality time. So, you know, beyond that hobbies, I read a lot. I love music. I listen to music. I draw poorly. I paint horribly. I'm an excellent cook. I owned an Italian restaurant for a while. I'm a fantastic cook. And, and that's what I do with my life. That's what I fill my time with when I'm not working. Nice. I love that. That's the longest answer I've ever gotten, and I love it. I love yeah, it. sorry. And, you know, Italian, the hands are moving everywhere. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. <laughs> um, I, I love it. So w when I was working at the prison, I worked out all the time. Uh, yeah. I, I was on the emergency response team, and I, I really needed to, oh, wow. you know, to yeah. work out. And and I I got hurt. And I stopped working out when I, when I left the prison, but I, then I worked in the oil field and I really didn't need to work out. Cause I, I mean, that was a constant workout. That is right? a workout. Yes. Um, so then I, I lost my job with COVID, uh, in, you know, left the oil field because I got COVID fired and I was, I was out of work for 15 months and then I got this job and I haven't worked out for, well, a couple years. And then I've just been sitting around. And I'm like, I have got to get back working out, but I really kind of don't want to. Why do you at the same time, to? I'm like, I really need to because I know, I know it's going to hurt again, <laughs> you know, and that's really, yeah. I'm just being lazy. Yeah. But I feel so good when I do, yeah. but I'm just like, oh, I, I actually got up and did a few push ups this morning and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm man. so out of shape. It's so bad. It hurts. Well, you know, so you know I, the just, cool part, I just need to get back and do her. Yeah. The the cool part about that, I had a, I mean, I've been, I was a wrestler in high school. I've been working out, you know, and, and not effectively. I'll admit that for a large portion of my life, I had a massive shoulder injury because I'm dumb sometimes. And it was a really stupid accident. I hurt my shoulder. Couldn't work out for a couple of years. And very much like you, I didn't want to, I just, I didn't want to go back. And mine was partly due to ego. It's like, there's no way I can bench 300 anymore. I probably can't even bench like a hundred pounds. And I started back and my wife, you know, heaven bless her. She's such a cheerleader. Um, you know, I come home after the first day back at the gym and I was legitimately depressed. You know, I like, I think I benched 115 and I am just mortified it's okay honey you'll get there really fast and here's my point to you i i regained everything i'd lost so quickly and it actually it cemented this as a habit in my life so i do man i encourage you you know stick at it and yeah it's gonna suck for like a month and a half but your body oh, wants yeah. to be there because you've done it before and man you'll you'll blow up i know you will it'll be awesome yeah. so yeah stick you, with it, the man. really dumb thing is is I can't wait to hear it. Junior college here in town. Yeah, I can get a whole year's membership for 120 bucks, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. It's 10 bucks a month if I pay it up front. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. hey, 
and and maybe and it's like it's like three blocks away know? from my house. <laughs> okay, no, yeah, I was gonna try and give you an out, but no, you don't get an out for that one. Fuck. No, on. it's it's all right here, man. It's all right yeah. here. Yeah, and my wife is like, just do it. You feel so good when you do, and you're so much happier. I'm like, I know. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I love you. Thank you for your advice. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Yeah. All right. You've convinced me. I'll, <laughs> I'll get her done. I'm gonna, <laughs> man. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna e- email you in a couple weeks, and you better have pictures for proof, buddy. I'll hold All right, you accountable. That sounds good. Yeah, that deal. sounds good. I need an accountability partner. Deal done. I'm I'm stuck in my room with this job, and I don't have that anymore. So I'll yeah. I'll hold you to that too. Deal. Because it, it doesn't happen if you don't have it. So N- not an empty threat. Cool. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Because we're we have to get connected after this so that my team can can get you the videos and all that good stuff so it's on you got it buddy um so we are uh over an hour into this thing uh which is awesome and crazy uh but we should probably go ahead and and try and dock this boat here so sure uh these last these last couple of questions are questions that i ask everybody uh that's on this show and this is the one that i i didn't want you to answer earlier uh, with with some of your answers, <laughs> fair. But what advice would you give to founders or soon to be founders that are going to be watching this program? Man, do I have to just pick one? Um, nope. You can give okay, as good. much advice as you want. We we don't have to stop. Okay. So you, I'll, I'll try and make this like a three point thing. Um, you got to make sure you get your hands going, though. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I have to be Italian. I, I can't even help it. <laughs> you know, my wife, she really, and I love her to death. She'll, she'll tease me all the time. If I ever want you to be quiet, I just sit on your hands. And legitimately, it's become a code in our marriage. When she has something super important, she doesn't want to get interrupted. She'll either come up and hold my hands down. Um, the other day, she came up and just laid her thigh across both of my hands so I couldn't talk. And that's my, okay, shut up and listen, bro. So it is, uh, right. again, stereotypes exist for a reason. Um, okay, right. so for a, a founder or a soon-to-be founder, so the first and probably most important thing is you need to find like-minded people. You know, and we've talked about it today. As an entrepreneur, as a founder, you can't go get advice from the guy who's working in the cubicle farm for Lockheed Martin. He may have great life advice for you. He may be a great husband, a great father, a great friend. That's not who you need to go to for business advice, right? You need to go find other people who are founders because your struggles are unique. The the temptations and the pitfalls that we face are unique. It's not, it is very hard to find someone who can mentor you or guide you that knows what you're going through. You know, and again, when I tell that story about Austin, my friends who are not entrepreneurs or not business owners, they just kind of look at me like, how? Everyone I talk to who owns a company goes, I've had that day. Did it. I, I did mm-hmm. it just the other day. You know, we've all had that experience. So that's one is find people who are walking that, that path with you. You know, and one of the things that I do through LinkedIn, I do some outreach on this. And I, I mean, I'm open to anybody. I tell people this all the time. You know, I will happily talk and coach and walk through something for free with you. I'm not, again, it's not about the money that I make. Um, I just did a very lovely woman named Mercedes out of California founding a new company. Spent about 15 hours just coaching and walking her through. Here's how you do this. She has no money. I'm not expecting her to ever pay me. I'm not asking for equity in her business. But again, my passion, as we've said earlier, my passion is to help people get where they want to get. You know, And I didn't have that when I was starting out. I didn't have someone that would even talk to me. Everyone just dismissed me as being young and kind of naive and stupid, which were all true statements. Um, but I just mm-hmm. need someone to give me a shot. And so that that is very passionate to me as I want to give people that shot. So that's one. The second one I would say is that you need to determine what your principles are. You know, and people do place a lot of emphasis on start with why and know why you're doing it. That is incredibly important. Additionally, it is very important to know what principles you hold dear. And we often, we think of the term principle and we say things like, you know, I'm going to be faithful in my marriage. I'm not going to eat meat or I'm going to eat only meat or, you know, whatever. Those are principles per se, and especially not in this context. In this context, 
a principal, again, it's things like I just said, I'm responsible whether I'm there or not. You know, one of the ones I love, I actually did a TikTok video about this the other day is, um, don't allow anybody to do anything that they're not trained to do. And this includes you. Don't build your own website. You can go find someone to do it. And I hear this all the time from consulting clients or people that I'm coaching. I don't have the money to do it. Okay, well, what do you do? What does your business do? I mean, again, pest control. I'm a massage therapist. I'm a chiropractor. I promise you, I can go to Facebook and find you someone who will build you a great professional website in trade for all the massage and all the chiropractic and all the pest control that it takes to make up that cost at a dollar for dollar trade. Trade. When my wife was first starting off and we were, you know, we don't have a lot of money when you're married young. We married very young. She was a massage therapist. We ate out at amazing restaurants because we would go into, we'd go in and meet with managers and be like, hey, we'll trade you a massage gift certificate for a food gift certificate. Fantastic. You know, some months we couldn't afford to make our car payment, uh, but we were eating these $300 meals at the Silver Fox. <laughs> so <laughs> work on trade, right? You can find people to do things that you can't imagine, right? Because we have this concept, mm -hmm. I have to pay $8,000 for a website. No, maybe you need to give five massages for a website, or maybe you need to give a year's worth of pest control for a website. Work on trade. And, and again, in conjunction with that principle, you can train yourself very easily. We live in a world where information is everywhere. You, on YouTube, you can learn how to do almost anything. So don't, don't go into anything as a founder without knowing at least the basic of how to do that thing. And whether that's your taxes, your bookkeeping, your website, your marketing, HR, hiring, interviewing employees, don't do anything unless you have been trained to do it or you're, you are paying someone or trading with someone who's been trained to do that. And then the third thing is this, make sure that you protect yourself really well. And I don't mean financially and I don't mean legal. I mean, protect your, your work-life balance. You need to have sacred cows. And I made that mistake early on in my career. I didn't have sacred cows. My, I was working, you know, when I was consulting bars, nightclubs, restaurants, I, I was working from about 10 in the morning until about five in the morning. I was running on about three, four hours of sleep. I saw my wife at 8 a.m. when I woke up to cook her breakfast and send her off to work doing massage. If she wanted to see me, and I alluded to this earlier, she would have to come into whatever bar or restaurant I was consulting so she could see me, you know, between the hours of 7 o'clock when she got off and 4 a.m. when I was coming home from my work. And it was horrible. You know, I, I nearly cost myself my marriage, which was awful. I realized there's no way we can have a family with this schedule. And it wasn't worth the time, you know? And so I realized that my sacred cow at first was my work and it was the effort I was throwing into building my business. And I was exactly backwards. My priorities were wrong. Well, my priority needed to be, my sacred cow needed to be, and now is, is my family, is my kids. And even though I have my fingers in all these pies and I'm working like mad, come 6.30, bud, my phone goes on silent and awesome. I don't pick it up. I, I don't care. Now, there are exceptions, and just like everything in life, there are exceptions that prove the rule, um, you know, but that this job, the battles that I fight out here, you know, we talk about chivalry. I know it's a long answer. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, in well, my coaching, good. we talk about chivalry, and chivalry is misunderstood, and unfortunately, it's been maligned incorrectly. At its heart, chivalry means... Out here in the world where, where I do business, I'm going to be, like I said, that warrior king. I'm going to be fierce. and I'm going to put all of my strength and effort and talent, and I'm going to bring my army to bear for my clients. When I get home, I'm going to be meek. I'm going to be mild at home. They don't need me to fight within my house. They need me to be there and provide comfort, stability, to be there. They need me to show up, right? They need me to fight out here and be gentle back there, which is the essence and the heart of chivalry. And, and once that sunk in and once I realized that, that changed that sacred cow, right? So I have this, we call it this wall around my home, and there's only one way in and one way out of that house, of that wall. It's figurative. It's a normal house. We don't live in a castle with a right. moat, uh, right. unfortunately. But, you know, I, again, I guard that very jealously. That time with my family is very important. Um, and that's what keeps me founded. And so I would say to someone starting off or who is kind of new in the world, you know, there are going to be times you're going to have those Austin moments where the world is burning down and you're going to put everything you have into it. At the end of the day, 
You're lying on the field of battle, exhausted and victorious. Those are great things. Live for those days. But, man, the in and out, the day-to-day, you make sure that you go home and you spend quality time. If you're single, you don't have a family yet, you spend time with people you love. You hang out with your friends. You have those connections outside of work. The saddest thing that I see is when I have a consulting client and I very quickly realize part of what's happening to them is they're burned out. And it's because all their relationships are focused around the universe of their job and their career. That is not a place that any one of you want to be. So start from the beginning with nurturing and growing those relationships outside of your work ecosystem. You'll have a long shelf life and you'll go really far. Nice. I really, I really like that whole answer. So I, I'm Thanks, glad it was bud. a three part answer. Um, <laughs> I really, I really enjoy the uh the analogy of the the wall around the house and there's only one way in um because that's that's the way we strive to do it here too and um you know there's there's not very many people that that try and open the door to my house well not not Um, with you uh in your kilt and boots standing guard out there i definitely wouldn't cross i'm a texan i'm armed And I still would walk away from that one. I get it. <laughs> Me too. Um, yeah. So, yeah. No, I get it. I love it. That's a great answer. Um, you know, in part two of, of your answer really lends itself great to the last question that I have. What is the best way for our viewers to get in touch with you if they so sure. wish? Yeah, um, you know, go through the Digital Canvas website. I freely give out my email. Um, I give out my cell phone. I won't do it here, but I will give you my email. It's very easy. It's BB, as in a BB gun, at your digital canvas. <laughs> and, it, yeah, you know. Uh, and, I, and I mean this very sincerely. And to everyone who's watching, and I say this all the time when I do speeches or I do public speaking, email me. And, and I, again, I'm not here trying to pitch something. I'm not trying to make money. I'm not trying to grow business, right? You need someone to talk to. You need someone to walk through something with you or help you strategize. I've got years of experience. And again, like I said before, I want to do what I wish someone had done for me. Reach out. I'm, you're not going to get spam. That's not like a drip campaign email. That's my legitimate. It comes right to my inbox and my phone email address. I, I'm here open and available. I will happily get on an hour call and drink coffee with someone and talk through whatever it is that's causing them issues in their work, their life, whatever they're struggling with as a founder. So, yeah, BB at your digital canvas. I look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for this show. Uh, yeah, I had a really you, great time. Wasn't sure the direction this one was going to go with the uh, – the information that I had and I'm really <laughs> glad it went the way that it went. Like this was an awesome, awesome show. Yeah. So it was a great uh, experience as well. Yeah. So you have a really great rest of your day uh, down Thank in you, Texas buddy. there. You uh, drink some water with your boy on your tailgate and you got have it. some really great dates with your wife. And uh, we'll talk to you later. <laughs>